Hello? 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 Calling for the radio. Uh, radio. Radio. Uh, radio. You're the radio uh, show? The radio? Radio show? 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 Radio you were telling me. I was talking about a stand up comedy routine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where the guy got the joke three seconds. No, where second. the guy tells delay jokes. He tells jokes that on purposely are designed to make people get it in about a minute after he tells the joke. So his first couple, three jokes, like no one's laughing. And then, like, mm-hmm. on wave three, like on joke four. There's a wave of people that get joke one. And if he's got like 15 minutes on stage, everyone's going to be cracking up by the end of the set, except at different jokes, because they all get it at different times. Well, what if they're cracking up like after the set's over and they're still but laughing? That would be awesome, wouldn't it? If like you walk <laughs> off the stage and they're laughing for like seven more minutes because they keep getting more jokes. <laughs> If you were the next comedian, you'd think you're great, <laughs> and maybe you're not. <laughs> maybe you're laughing at my jokes, not yours. <laughs> it just took them a while to get it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you couldn't get it. It's going to take you a minute. It's going to take okay. a minute, dude. Don't worry about it. How about you don't stress them out? Be like, hey, man, it's all yeah. good. Wait a minute. Don't, you'll get don't it. Don't worry about it. You'll, it'll come around. It, it'll happen. <laughs> <laughs> don't get all anxious about it. It's okay. <laughs> take Maybe chill, that's Bill. the way you start the show off. You go, hey, I'm going to sling a set of uh, delay jokes at you guys, so... You know, if you don't get it right away, don't worry about it. It might come to you later. Be <laughs> open to that. That should be the way I'd start this. That's how I should start this. Guy. What's a chill pill? They, they, uh, I think they introduced chill pill like way before they started introducing all those amphetamines that make everybody chilled out. The you know, chill pill. Yeah, That's the chill. You pill. Remember, people, people were like, "Yeah, oh, take a chill pill." Take a chill pill. Oh, sure. And then well, all that was, was vernacular. Like, oh, sure. That wasn't yeah, a chill pill. Take a chill pill. Yeah. No, but it, like it became a language the idea first. Was like, they pushed effect? it. Yeah, they pushed it first, right? And then all of a sudden, <laughs> it became a. Nobody says chill pill anymore. It's because everybody. I guarantee everybody you, got if we came pill. out with a placebo pill, there was just a sugar pill, and we and people were like, "Hey, man, you got some pills?" And I go, "I got a chill pill." They'd be like, hell yeah. I'd be like, $5. If I got arrested, as soon as they did sugar. the chemical report for the sugar, I'd be placebo <laughs> effect, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you see how relaxed everybody got? Don't what you got? You got those placebos? You got those placebos? <laughs> hey man, I got them. How much you want? I want 50. All right. Well, it's five bucks. 500. Five. Yeah. Here we go. Let's do this. And then and then they, there's like some dance party like down the beach and you go to the dance party and everyone's like, this placebo <laughs> is the shit. <laughs> you walk in the door, they're like, placebo. <laughs> <laughs> it becomes the new drug, which helps the whole Oxycontin epidemic. Yeah. All these people are taking placebo yeah. effect. <laughs> Why not, dude? I mean, yeah. the news and like the TV freaking is, is like kind of a placebo effect in a way. I could make my case for that. Yeah, just create a new placebo. Well, it's still a sugar pill. It's just what if the you had idea a behind the sugar pill. That's all, it's all it is. They take people. Well, I'm you sorry, bla- I'm interrupting. Well, listen, dude. What if you took a blade of grass, dipped it in sugar and water? And we're like, dude, suck on this grass, dude, for a little bit. People would be like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> it would taste good. It would be called grass. They'd be like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they, but you got to get a prairie grass, something unique, but yeah. it's available. Yeah. Yeah. It's available. Yeah. But anyways, 
if you sat with two guys and just be like, dude, if you want to do this, you have to like, you can't do anything the day before. You have to juice fast right. or something like that. Yeah, and meditate. And, like, and you have to drink tons of water and tons exercise. of water, dude. Tons of water. And you got to really exercise. sweat a lot. You know, you got to run or do something yeah, after. And yeah. be like, and afterward, you got to do the same thing. Yeah. Like, it'll really heighten the like, experience. Dude, yeah. it'd be like, you don't understand, dude. Trust me. This will make you see things and vision like you've never seen before. And if you were doing it with them and like you were like just like not faking anything, you're like, you know what? I do have vision. Look at this sunlight. And just like focus on the sunlight and like, I don't know, dude. Just the placebo effect is a real thing. Because all they do with those medications is they take people in a lab and they give some people the real medication and some people the sugar pill and they tell them what it's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. You know, they tell them this is going to cure your depression. They have a bunch Mm -hmm. of people with depression in a room and like five of the 10 people that have the placebo are like, you know what? I'm feeling better. (laughs) It's the idea of it. (laughs) The idea of it my dad helping you, that. they believe my it. Dad did and my dad did one of those uh, blind <laughs> studies. He did. Yeah, it was for hair growth. Like, re, like, like basically, it was, he told me it was for stopping his hair to fall out and then, like, kind of, like, holding it there and maybe regenerating some hair. Okay. He took him for, like, a year. I mean, <laughs> you know. I mean, you don't did want to get some hair, now. though? No. no. <laughs> but he thought he kind of did. Like, he thought it was working for his life. <laughs> so, you know what, though? I'll tell you what the placebo effect Maybe was. it kind of was. Was that, look, he went from feeling insecure to somewhat confident. Right. Because he was insecure right. about losing his hair. He felt like hair was growing back, even if it wasn't. And the or placebo effect yeah. is that he had more confidence. Right. You know, like I'm younger. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm more vibrant. And he would kind of say that to himself and it would make it so, even though he didn't have any hair growing, the idea affected his psyche. Mm-hmm. I mean, the placebo effect is a deceptive way to put a product to market, but it's a good way to teach somebody in the sense that you tell them they are something that they haven't achieved, but you believe with them that they can achieve it. And with that belief, they can go from where they're at to achievement. Hmm. It could be in many areas. It could be and it psychologically. Like cult. <laughs> well, well cult. cults are based on understanding that science, though. Don't you think? Yeah, I mean... It seems it's exactly based on like teaching people like to you believe get somebody in to believe yeah. that they're feeling healthy and they're dancing and they're actually moving. Right. They are getting healthier. Yeah. But then they see it. They can make it mean other things. That's when it gets deceptive. That's a cult, right? Yeah. Because cults do that. And boy, some cults are slick. Like there's some good ones, dude. There's some stuff that's happened. Super brainwashed amazing. stuff, dude. Yeah. Dude, there was a guy, you were probably five years old, bro. So I was Mm -hmm. like in high school or college. And there Mm -hmm. was this guy in San Diego who convinced everybody that it was time to let their bodies go and that they were (laughs) ready to go into the stratosphere. And like 35 Mm -hmm. people like took a like arsenic or whatever and committed suicide in this bunker in San Diego or something. Mm Mm-hmm. Jeez. Like, so it can be taken pretty far, <laughs> but <laughs> hey, get down and see that, see that manhole cover, see that manhole cover, just go over there and uh, pick that up, everybody jump down in there, uh-huh, yep, yep, and okay, everybody's down in here, all right, close it up, uh-huh, yeah, close it up, yep, complete darkness, okay. And everybody hold out their hand. Uh-huh. Here we go. 
hold this in your hand. And then everybody put that in their mouth. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, blam. <laughs> well, here's this is how if you want to talk about paranoia, which I'll tell you about a paranoia experience that I've had in the last <laughs> couple of years. <laughs> so go for it. Okay. So like basically part of the mastery of confusing the minds of the masses through YouTube videos is that if mm. you pursue a subject, mm -hmm. you'll watch three different Legion. things about yeah. that subject. Yeah. I've been but, hearing about that, dude. I don't... Well, uh, listen, yeah, yeah. one of them uh -huh. is misleading, one of them is the truth, and one uh, of them is crazy as crackers, uh, but you don't know the uh, subject. Hmm. And so you see these three videos, and you're like, hold mm -hmm. on. And it makes you, like, paranoid, <laughs> like like you're a crack addict, like, looking around the corner, like, you know, freaking out, thinking a mosquito is attacking you. You don't know. Right. So, but, so sometimes... When I think about, like, so Alex Jones, which, God bless the guy. I don't know him. I never met him. Anyways, he says stuff, dude, and he, he's, like, full emotion sometimes. And then he's, like, super passionate about, like, what he discovered. And then, like, a few days later, he's like, well, maybe I was wrong. I'm like, damn, dude, you convinced me for a minute. Then I get paranoid. I'm like, okay. And then I see a video about him being part of the CIA. And I'm like, ah, maybe he's part of the CIA. What the fuck? And then I get so paranoid. <laughs> and then when I see like him saying something, I'm like, man, maybe it's true. And then I start to hear, like I somehow get streamed through my video about how like in World War II, there was a radio guy who was like mm -hmm. Alex Jones, who really? led millions of people yeah. to their death right. in Russia. Right, right. And I'm like, is this guy a plant to lead me in a certain direction that they're planning for me to walk into the pit? <laughs> I can't terrible listen to fucking it. cycle, I'll just dude. listen to it for a second. <laughs> I still can't figure out whether he's a plant or not. <laughs> ah! uh, uh. And then you listen to like a David Icke video yeah. and he's talking about yeah. the lizard well, people. And then you see, yeah, well, then you go back yeah. to an Alex Jones video and his <laughs> eyes are darting and you're like, is he lizard dude? <laughs> oh man. Yeah, it's a challenging I'm always, I'm time always, to be I'm alive. I'm wondering so. why Joe Rogan's so fascinated with your with your body. <laughs> <laughs> like you need to work out. You need to meditate. You need to eat right. He like Is knows the kind of human like steak he wants. <laughs> sounds like Hansel and Gretel. Like, in, oh, come into this candy. <laughs> Here's your red house. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I knew that dude was wrong. <laughs> there was something about the way he talks. And then you leave all your breadcrumbs and your cookies. It's no wonder they call them cookies on your phone. They're literally cookie crumbs. You're leaving cookie crumbs every time. They have put it out there flat, bare, ball, fucking right in your face. Honestly... Cookies. Oh, cookies. I'll tell you oh, what. Those are things that I get if there's a guy get who's website. like a... Oh, those are a way to track me? Oh, those are crumbs? Oh, I'm leaving cookie crumbs? What am I, Hansel and Gretel? Like, <laughs> what the hell? Is this a folk tale? Are you de right. just developing kind a, of it a is. social it's a, media folktale? It's a computer folktale. Like, folk it's a computer folktale. What, kind of what kind of folktale algorithm are you trying to pull on me, man? Hold on. Can you imagine if if there was like a robot community that had wiped out half the human population and when they would have new robots, when they would like Weep. turn on the electricity right. and they're now right. active, oh, they start I to tell them kind of the light. equivalent, but the equivalent of like children's their stories. Own. And they're like, yeah, but their own once a, Right. But they'd be like, once upon a time, he had <laughs> algorithms. Do you know algorithms? And they'd be like, Weep. yep, we do. <laughs> And they'd be like, 
And we talk to the skin ones, those bloody humans. Bleep. Oh, yeah. And they're emotionally censored to not like humans right away. Can you believe it? It could happen. And then they keep telling them a story about how they confused the humans and killed half of them. And they're like, yay. And they're like, but still half are alive. <laughs> And your job. Well, and then the yeah, but the humans, the humans rebelled, and they they're 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 they're, re, they're rebellious and they're rebels, and we you know they're you know they need to be stomped down because the ones that the humans that we're working with are the good humans, and the humans that disagree with us, those are the bad ones, you know, because if we don't have control over you, you're the bad one, you know, anything that humans don't have control over, they associate with like bad or demon. You know, they're always constantly, like, referring to anything like nature or, like, um, I mean, if you look at old, you know, Eastern culture, they're always, like, you know, the balance between good and evil. And the things that are bad are usually things that they can't control, like, you know, like spirits hmm. or uh, uh, seismic events or, you know, uh or people, tsunamis, or yeah, or yeah, or people, yeah. And then they they label them as gods that they can't control, that are, you know, the bad ones. So a lot of, hmm. I don't know. I always think that the bad ones kind of, some bad ones maybe get a bad rap because they just they aren't understood because they're uncontrollable, and that it gets lumped into that whole division thing, and that's that's the whole thing. This whole division thing, it's just it's absolutely out of control. And who wants to control it? Everybody wants to control the division and heal the division, you know. And you know, <laughs> yeah. How are you going to do that? <laughs> well, you can't do it in that frame of mind. You well, know, you, you better be, create be. like a catastrophe if you're one of those. Uh, no, you got to be galleoners. Well, well, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And then create the solution before you create the problem, and then you're the fucking champion. Yeah, I like. Yeah. I well, like that. Is a con. That's basically like a high level con on a mass scale. Yeah. But there are micro cons better than that con. I think that that con's been been played and most people I think who are you know, savvy to be able to see that or you know, able to see that or identifying that and calling it out, but it doesn't it doesn't doesn't matter. That's not the you know, what, what people have to do is just come together and um, that's the whole division that's the whole reason why there's so much division uh, uh, you hear a lot of people say it kids parents you know people they're they're like oh there's just so much division in the world today political division they're like well why is that think about why that is like don't 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 get wrapped up in a or b or left or right or you know blue or red or whatever you know why is there a division and and the top, there is no division, and <laughs> that's a, that's a manifest that's a that's a constructed thing that is is being manifested in, into our consciousness, and, and uh, I just don't feel like you know people are rebelling against the weirdest things. They're like, ah, oh, I want this change, and you're like, really? I never even would have thought that. If I wanted any change, if I were you and put myself in your footsteps I, or shoes, I wouldn't want. I wouldn't even think to change that i think to change other things that would make sense to change but they're like yeah but this is this is the root of it and yeah, I mean, you're like yeah but i'm past that like those are constructed things that like are being told to be you know divided uh you know uh, ideas to be divided upon it's it, no, people who are in their normal state who are rooting for a certain change wouldn't even necessarily go to that they'd go much higher but yet we're kind of pulled back into that dumbed down doofus kind of what were those two guys on the on the uh uh Alice in Wonderland? Oh those Tweedledee two and Tweedledum. Tweedledee and Tweedledum. I love their like... fucking outfits, dude. Their <laughs> outfits were <laughs> it's a little bit like dude. that. I like that kind of striped shirt. They were fat <laughs> cats <laughs> in a tree, dude. They were awesome. Tweedledee and Tweedledum. They were they were something. They had something yeah. to say. 
they're completely divided. I mean, get their own they were yeah, they were saying the opposite of each other, but they had something to say to Alice, and she was like, "What?" And they were like, "Yup." And she's like, "Well, I'm gonna yeah. move on." And they're like, "All right." <laughs> Basically, <laughs> that, that was a huge miss point. They were trying to make a giant point, and they like totally missed it. They just well, never made but a point. It was actually a really good tell. Like if you like, if that was a poker game, they were a great tell. They're like, there is deception about. It is this. It is that. But she was looking. What was Alice looking for? Because she was looking for something after she got down the hall. A rabbit. She went to the rabbit. party. Yeah, she was looking for the white rabbit, and they totally didn't tell her where it is, but she kind of figured out how to get to the rabbit anyway. Right. So they say. Yeah. Well, Tweedledee and Tweedledum are very much like the, the red and the blue and the black and the white and the political structure. It's just, it doesn't really matter because after this, the whole thing is said and done, you're basically looking at Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Well, here's like, the cool thing. Dude. They're always gonna, they're always gonna be together, and yet, right? They feel like they're divided, and make you feel right. like you have to choose one. And in reality, it's just Tweedledee and Tweedledum. It's the same. Well, like they're the one in the, they're twins, and you meet them in the forest. Like, you can move past that. <laughs> so what I would say, <laughs> how you move past it, it is with your free will and your decision. Right? You decide. Like you hear both sides. And then you decide. It's called critical thinking. That's or no, that's the mechanism which you come to the decision, which is with critical thinking. So if you are one of a, of two or three generations where they try to destroy many things, one of them being critical thinking, and you don't know how to use it that well. How so? How did they do it? Like how did oh, they beautifully really do it? Like so well. TV. Yeah. Well, put it this Media. way. I guess. I'll tell you a way that it played out with me as an individual. So, I have been a part of this uh, workout club in Atlanta off and on for years. And I told them I'm ready to start up again. And they said, cool. And I was given a directive, like, you know, before I have what's called my balance chart, which is to just look at other people that are already doing it and say something like when they do something positive, yeah, say you know, something drink positive. water, do yeah. push ups, and they're posting right. it. But I just right. say inspirational. Now, mm -hmm. I kept saying inspirational, motivational. I didn't even have my own words. So I was like a parrot. I was. It, I was doing my directive. But yeah, the idea is good to be positive. No, it's a great it's a great directive. But the thing is is that I was asking myself, what's another word besides motivational? And I was saying this before I wrote anything and I'd be like, write motivational. Because <laughs> I like, I didn't come up with another word. <laughs> <laughs> What's more so motivational like a fucking parrot. sounding than the word motivational? <laughs> no, but I have those words in my mind, and somehow no, I couldn't access those words. Maybe like motivational, <laughs> inspirational, Motivation. like because that's my directive. He didn't say I had to say that word. He was, and, and what he was telling me was something very smart. He's like that goes into your subconscious, and which is a very the most active and most powerful part of your brain is your subconscious, not your conscious mind. Yeah, that's weird. So he was telling that. me stuff to put into my subconscious mind, which is cool. Weird. But, yeah, that is cool. But, dude, I, I, I was trying to come up with my own words, and I couldn't do it. Hmm. I think it's because I wouldn't let my mind flow free. I think part of it's emotional. And I think... Yeah, you feel guilty. <clears throat> yeah, the guilt. Maybe. Guilt is a... Or maybe like mother. insecure to say a word I come up with. Yeah. Or I wouldn't. Yeah. It was you know how yeah. like when you feel stress, it almost feels like a clamp down on your body, or like anxiety, like clamp, like like it clamps your emotion, like you don't even have access to your own mind. 
Right. Right. Does that make sense? Do you ever feel that? Yeah. No, no. I, when you said anxiety, because I don't, I don't feel a lot of, uh, I don't know, I just don't feel a lot of the, uh, the stress. I mean, stress to me uh, is just a, 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 an umbrella word. I need more specific, you know, stresses. You know, there's a, there's a, a very non-specific actually. For yeah. Sure. I mean, yeah. So, but what, so, but I was non-specific because I was reading like what these guys are doing. They're, they're doing push-ups or eating a salad or they're, you know, they're doing an exercise or doing something positive. My directive was to say something like inspirational and I got the two words, inspirational and motivational. There's like a thousand <laughs> words I could have said, dude. You know, I just kept saying those two words like a fucking parrot. It, I didn't have access to a part of my brain. I think it was because I was like, I don't know, stressing out on that idea and was constricting me from my own free flow, like words. Yeah, but sometimes those are things to like to stay on. You know, and just keep with and like keep reminding yourself. Sometimes when you do choose a word, you can just focus in and hone in on it. And if it's repeated in a different forum, then you can really start to digest it. And But at the same time, are, are you repeating what you heard or are you saying what you feel? And I think that's the difference. You know, so I was not what you heard saying what I feel. what I feel. I was, I didn't. So for some reason, and I don't know the reason, I didn't have access to what I feel. But I well, wanted to express yeah. that. Uh, by the way, with people that like, I'm safe with them. Like they love me. They're they're good to me. So I have no reason to be insecure. Like to hold me back from saying right. my own words. Right. But but I couldn't. My own words couldn't come out. I think it was emotional. So like what you, kind of what, emotional conflict? Well, what comes out of your mouth when you jump out of an airplane? Have you ever jumped out of an airplane? Like, what? What? I what have. Jubilee. What jubilee? What excitement? What? You know, statement? Do you do you say to yourself to put yourself in the right mind? I, well, what? So I did. So when you have never. Uh, jumped out of a plane before you're connected to someone who has. So I did a tandem jump. And uh the guy And what do you said, say? You know, I mean <laughs> No, what? I said, Do you want to do what the crazy the jump? And I said, Yeah, he said, Okay, tuck your legs. And we jumped out of the plane and we did a couple flips and then he told me everything I needed to do and I did it. And it was cool. And he was like the leader and he totally I was safe and it was awesome. But as far as words, I don't know what words. So I, you know what happened when I went out of that plane? Hey, is that, let me let's 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 do this on the next radio show. Fine. All right. Let's let's tell this Woo! on the next radio show. Woo! Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Wow. <laughs> 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 